Welcome to our show, Hong Kong Brief. Today, we're diving into the world of makeup primers, exploring how they can transform your beauty routine and give you that flawless finish. We'll also discuss the critical jury deliberations happening in Hong Kong regarding defendants linked to a failed bomb plot against the police, a case that has captured public attention. And don't miss our analysis of the recent downturn in Hong Kong's stock market, sparked by a significant drop in PDD holdings, raising concerns about the future of tech and e-commerce in the region. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. South China Morning Post reports that the use of makeup primers has evolved significantly since their introduction, particularly with the rise of silicone-based formulas in the early 2000s. These primers act as a barrier between the skin and makeup, smoothing out imperfections and enhancing the longevity of cosmetics. While some beauty enthusiasts swear by them, others remain skeptical, viewing them as unnecessary. Today, Primers cater to various skin concerns, offering benefits like hydration, oil control, and color correction. For example, silicone-based primers are favored for their pore-filling properties, while water-based options are ideal for sensitive skin. Additionally, specialized primers for the eyes, lips, and lashes have gained popularity, each designed to enhance specific areas of the face. In another article, South China Morning Post covers the ongoing deliberations of a jury in Hong Kong concerning seven defendants linked to a foiled bomb plot targeting police officers during the 2019 social unrest. As the jurors weigh the evidence, including testimonies from prosecution witnesses and extensive chat records, they face the challenging task of determining the defendants' involvement in the conspiracy. The jury must reach a unanimous or majority verdict, and if they struggle to agree, they may have to stay overnight in court accommodation. The case has garnered significant attention, with jurors receiving daily allowances and being reminded of the complexities involved, reminiscent of other high-profile trials that have taken days to conclude. Lastly, South China Morning Post reports on a downturn in Hong Kong stocks, primarily driven by the 29% plunge of PDD Holdings, a major player in the e-commerce sector. This decline has raised alarms among investors regarding the competitive landscape of Chinese tech firms, as seen in the sharp drops of stocks like Alibaba and JD.com. The sell-off was exacerbated by Walmart's recent decision to divest its stake in JD.com, signaling concerns about the sustainability of growth in the sector. Despite potential rate cuts from the Federal Reserve, the market remains cautious, reflecting broader anxieties about economic recovery in China and the implications for tech-related investments. South China Morning Post reports on Hong Kong's reluctance to adopt Australia's newly implemented Right to Disconnect law, which allows workers to ignore employer communications outside of office hours. Human resources experts and business leaders argue that Hong Kong's success hinges on its work culture, which values flexibility and responsiveness, especially in the financial sector where communication across time zones is crucial. Agnes Chan, chairwoman of the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce, emphasizes the need for mutual agreement between employers and employees for any work arrangements outside regular hours. The culture of overtime is prevalent, with young professionals like Leo Chan expressing dissatisfaction over the pressure to work late, highlighting the tension between work demands and personal life. In another article, South China Morning Post outlines the anticipation among Hong Kong developers for a surge in property sales, with 2,800 new flats set to launch as interest rates are expected to drop. Centeline Property Agency predicts that the easing of rates by the U.S. Federal Reserve could lead to a significant increase in home transactions, with expectations of up to 2,000 deals in September alone. Despite the optimism, market experts caution that a rate cut may not lead to a substantial rise in home prices, as developers focus on reducing their unsold inventory. Currently, there are over 22,300 unsold residential units in Hong Kong, and recent transactions indicate a cautious approach from buyers waiting for clearer market signals. 
The South China Morning Post recounts a tragic incident from 1982, where a barbecue outing in Stanley escalated into a fatal brawl. Two groups of midnight picnickers clashed over a barbecue pit, resulting in one death and two injuries. The altercation began with verbal exchanges and quickly turned violent, with participants using barbecue forks as weapons. The incident shocked the community, leading to police appeals for witnesses. A year later, one of the youths involved received a four-month prison sentence, highlighting the serious consequences of the altercation and the legal repercussions that followed. This grim event serves as a stark reminder of how quickly leisure activities can turn violent under the influence of anger and conflict. South China Morning Post reports on the remarkable journey of Hong Kong ballet star Tyrion Law, who recently achieved her dream of becoming a principal dancer at the National Ballet of Canada. The announcement, made by artistic director Hope Muir during Law's debut performance as Kitri in Don Quixote, left her in disbelief. Law, who grew up in Suen Wan, credits her supportive parents and early ballet training for her success. She recalls her early experiences, including a pivotal competition that showcased her talent and led to opportunities abroad. Now, as she prepares to perform in Hong Kong to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Hong Kong Ballet Group, Law reflects on her growth as an artist and the responsibilities that come with her new role. In another piece, SCMP opinion highlights the urgent need for a regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies in Hong Kong, especially following a landmark high court ruling that emphasizes transparency within the sector. The ruling stems from a dispute over a decentralized autonomous organization, DAO, and its management, and it underscores the importance of maintaining proper financial records in the cryptocurrency space. As Hong Kong aims to establish itself as a Web3 business hub, the call for regulations becomes more pressing, particularly in light of recent scandals involving significant financial losses. The article advocates for a balanced approach that protects investors while fostering a vibrant environment for virtual assets. Lastly, South China Morning Post introduces Logan Marshall Green, the actor known for his role in The O.C., as he prepares to star alongside Sarah Jessica Parker in the series and just like that. Marshall Green, often compared to Tom Hardy, shares insights into his background as a theater brat, growing up with parents who were drama teachers. His journey into acting was not straightforward, as he initially rebelled against the theater but eventually embraced it. The article also touches on his personal life, including past relationships with notable actresses and the challenges he faced during his marriage. Through his experiences, Marshall Green exemplifies the complexities of navigating fame and personal relationships in Hollywood. South China Morning Post reports on Daniel Daggers, the self-styled Mr. Super Prime, who has found success in the luxury real estate market, particularly through the Netflix show Buying London. Despite mixed reviews, the show has significantly boosted Daggers' business, bringing in over £270 million worth of real estate for his company, DDRE Global. Daggers, who has a fascinating background that includes humble beginnings and a brief career in semi-professional football, emphasizes the show's entertainment value and its role in creating business opportunities. His journey from a small home in Maida Vale to representing high-profile clients, including royal family members, showcases his resilience and adaptability in the competitive real estate landscape. The Sydney Morning Herald highlights Australia's luxury property market, which remains resilient compared to global trends affected by rising interest rates. In a recent analysis, all major Australian cities saw increases in luxury residential property prices, with Perth leading at a 3.7% rise. Experts attribute this stability to renewed migration post-COVID and strong international interest, particularly from Asia. While some cities, like Melbourne, face challenges with price sensitivity and regulatory changes, the overall sentiment remains optimistic as demand for high-end properties continues to thrive. 
the report underscores the importance of population growth and international buyers in sustaining the luxury market in Australia. The Independent covers Quentin Tarantino's comments on the Alec Baldwin rust shooting case, where he expressed that actors hold a minor responsibility in handling guns on set. Tarantino criticized the trial and emphasized the role of armorers in ensuring safety, stating they carry 90% of the responsibility. He defended the use of real guns in filmmaking, citing the rarity of accidental deaths on set and arguing that nervousness among actors could undermine the creative process. Tarantino's insights reflect a complex view on the balance between safety and authenticity in film production, highlighting the emotional toll such incidents can have on those involved. Guardian reports that Pavel Durov, the billionaire co-founder of Telegram, was arrested in France amid an investigation into criminal activities on the platform, which includes serious allegations such as child sexual abuse and fraud. Durov, who holds French citizenship, was taken into custody at Lou Bourget Airport shortly after arriving from Azerbaijan. The arrest has ignited a global debate about free speech, with French President Emmanuel Macron emphasizing the need for legal frameworks to protect citizens' rights. Telegram has defended Durov, asserting that the platform complies with EU laws and that it is not responsible for how users exploit its services. In a separate incident, the South China Morning Post reveals a troubling pattern of thefts occurring on flights from Vietnam to Hong Kong. A mainland Chinese passenger reported that his credit card was stolen during a flight, leading to unauthorized purchases totaling over 36,000 Hong Kong dollars. This incident follows another theft on the same day involving a Rolex watch and cash taken from a fellow traveler. The police are treating both cases seriously, with one suspect already apprehended in connection with the second theft, highlighting the growing concern over security on international flights. Yahoo US covers the ongoing investigation into the unsolved murder of 19-year-old Michael Kenneth Mowry III in New Hampshire. Nearly four years after his tragic death, authorities are seeking new tips to help solve the case, which involved a home invasion robbery by masked assailants. Mowry's mother shared her heartbreak, reminiscing about her son's loving nature and the dreams he had for his future. As investigators continue to piece together the details, they are focusing on leads that suggest the suspects have connections to nearby areas, underscoring the community's desire for justice and closure. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. News breaks, buzz the ground, stories spit, walls come down, voices merge in the sound, faces mix in the crowd. Broadcasters paint the scene, world events on our screen, every look a different theme, words collide in the stream. Six degrees connect the dots. Background stories hold the nuts Hear the voices rise a lot Truth unveils in every spot Cultures clash across the globe Spin the threads in a stroke Every story wears a robe
Detectives day by day Hidden truths come to play In the background shades of grey Every story finds its way